Hi LEGO fans! It's hump day which means we're halfway to the last shopping weekend before Christmas. It's a time when we all jump in the car and sit in traffic before squabbling over gifts nobody really wants. Speaking of terrible gifts that nobody wants, every day until Christmas Eve I'll be opening up every door on every LEGO advent calendar including LEGO Friends, LEGO City, LEGO Star Wars and LEGO Harry Potter! Yesterday's gifts showed some signs of improvement, but my scoring got me into some hot water in the comments. Coming in last, earning one point for LEGO Star Wars and earning me the death sentence on 12 systems was this Trade Federation battleship. In third, earning two points for LEGO City was this police truck, which in retrospect probably should have come in last. In second, using elfish magic to steal three points, my lucky charms and the hearts of the Herbert girls was the LEGO Friends elf. No, you're not seeing double, they really did use the same gift twice. And returning to power was LEGO Harry Potter. We shall go to the ball thanks to this exquisite Padma Patil minifigure. They took four points and the lead from LEGO Star Wars. After my sprinkling of 10 points, Harry Potter is in first place with 43 points. LEGO Star Wars is now in second with 42. LEGO City continues to underperform in third place with 34 points. And after some positive results, LEGO Friends dropped back into last place with 31 points. Will Harry Potter stay on top or will they drop the ball and let the Wookiee win? Let's find out by opening up every door number 16 on every LEGO Advent Calendar. Today we're starting out with the ever popular LEGO Harry Potter and we're looking for door number 16 which is... Oh come on brain, there we go. And what have we got today? Oh well that's... Not very exciting. We have another one of these Christmas trees, which is going to be great for decorating the uh, the Great Hall or wherever they host the Yule Ball, uh, but ultimately not very satisfying. So for the second time this year, Harry Potter has gone done Christmas trees. I suppose playing to their advantage, we do at least have two of the blasted things. Now before you all go burning me in the comments, I do recognise that these complement the Christmas tree we got a couple of days ago. A very attractive trio it is too, but rules is rules and we judge each day by the content behind the door. At the base of each tree, they are both identical, we find decoration provided by Transclear and Transblue cheese slopes. The tops are made from white cone elements, and black dishes at the bottom stop them from falling over, always a major concern at a Christmas party. So there you have it, a pair of Yule Ball themed Christmas trees. Definitely no notable creative wizardry here. Will today's festive trees find favour when it comes to awarding points, or will they get poked into wizarding toilet paper? We'll find out soon! Our second calendar for hump day is the LEGO Friends calendar, and we are looking for door number 16, which is... Where are you? There you are. So, let's see what we've got today. We have another one of these elf workstations. Uh, elf labour. Very, very cheap. Um, oh, I see what's going on here. So we've got some, uh, some shears or some scissors, and then a roll of wrapping paper. So this is going to be a wrapping station. So it seems it's not only Drake who likes to do some wrapping at Christmas. Today's gift from LEGO Friends is another one of those little tables. Today it's themed as a gift wrapping station, presumably for Santa's enslaved army of evil elves. It's a nice looking little gift and definitely shows some creative imagination. Not like you Harry Potter! On top of the table we find a roll of pink wrapping paper. Possibly the first and only time I've seen a LEGO element used to represent sellotape. Other brands are available and a star and a bow which are presumably used for dressing the gift. That's certainly what we saw a few days ago on the skateboard. Of course when you're running around Santa's workshop trying to get everything ready for Christmas, you definitely want a big pair of scissors in hand. That's a really nice element and you'll be pleased to know that we actually get a spare. This kind of reminds me of one of the gift wrapping stations you might see at a high-end department store. Remember when we could go to those? It's a super nice gift, full of imagination and I'm sure it'll do well for LEGO friends today. Our penultimate calendar on this wonderful Wednesday is LEGO Star Wars and we're looking for door number 16 which is... Oh, where is it? You guys can see it, I can't. There we go. Let's see what we've got behind this wonderful door today. And you know what? Um, that is very colourful. I've no idea what this is. I'm tempted to say something like a Gungan sub, but um, 
Not a lot of elements today. I will certainly look this up and put it together and we'll take a closer look. So what is today's gift from LEGO Star Wars? I imagine a few people are asking the same question. It is actually a micro-scale recreation of Anakin Skywalker's pod racer from The Phantom Menace. LEGO first released Anakin's pod racer in 1999, again in 2003, reprised it in 2011, released a polybag in 2012, and followed up again last year with a 20th anniversary edition. Either LEGO really likes this pod racer or they're desperately trying to get it right. This version definitely doesn't look quite as impressive as some of those other builds. Basically we have a small cockpit at the back, and that's dragged along at suicidal speed by two high-powered engines. Those are the bright yellow things. The engines are locked together with an energy binder which presumably helps to balance the thrust. Finally, durable control cables connect the engines to the cockpit. I've got to say, in this scale it's not nearly as impressive. This consists of only 10 LEGO elements, which would be really impressive if it actually looked like a pod racer. Taking a look from the side, I think I can see what the designers were trying to do here. It's built on a 1x3 plate, which I think is meant to represent the sand underneath the pod racer. If you think this looks like a pod racer speeding across the desert, you probably have better imagination than me. Will Anakin's pod racer win the race for Gift of the Day? Let's see what LEGO City has to offer first. Finally, for Wednesday 16th of December, we have the LEGO City calendar. And where's it all gone? There it is. Sorry, Father Christmas. Let's open this up. And we do have a minifigure today. Um, yeah, very cool. Hang on, that is going to be... Where is she? Is that Daisy Kaboom? I think it might just be. Let's take a look. In fact, yeah, no question. In fact, look at that really cool torso print. This is Daisy Kaboom, and she looks great. It's always a good day when you get a minifigure inside an advent calendar, and LEGO City has been providing some corkers this year. This minifig is Daisy Kaboom Lewis, who is a criminal known for making explosives out of just about anything. A bit like MacGyver, then. Daisy apparently is part of the Bulldog Gang, which explains some of her clothing. Daisy Kaboom's accessory is this pair of handcuffs. I'm guessing she probably shouldn't have those. Starting out at the bottom, things are pretty boring with these plain grey minifigure legs. Thankfully, we have a really nice torso, which shows a red jacket over what is probably a prison uniform. There's also some really nice metallic printing showing the studs on the belt and also on the neck choker. That would tie in perfectly with her being part of the Bulldog Gang. On the back of the jacket is a graphic showing a stereotypical bomb complete with smiley face. This reminds me very much of Serious Sam, a video game from the late 90s. The hair is definitely a very individual style, including the dip dyed bit at the front. This is exclusive to Daisy, and Daisy appears in two sets. You can also find Daisy in 60246 Police Station. The facial expression is quite cute with a sweet little smile. In fact, she looks perfectly innocent. Until you check out the alternate expression, which reveals Daisy to be a masked criminal. LEGO City has certainly delivered the goods with another great minifigure. But is Daisy Kaboom made of the stuff that can win Gift of the Day? Let's find out! So we have four gifts from behind door number 16 of every LEGO Advent Calendar awaiting our judgement. LEGO Harry Potter drank too much of the Lorax Kool-Aid and planted another two Christmas trees behind door number 16. From LEGO Friends we got a festive gift wrapping station. LEGO Star Wars partied like it was 1999 again with this micro-scale pod racer. And from LEGO City we got the explosively criminal character that is Daisy Kaboom. But which gift deserves to spend Christmas wrapping with Drake? Is that actually a good thing? And which failed so miserably that it deserves to be in next year's LEGO Friends calendar? In last place, earning a single solitary point for LEGO Star Wars is Anakin's Pod Racer. The scale doesn't do justice to the Pod Racer, and it just ends up looking like a blue and yellow ship. In third, and earning two points, is LEGO Harry Potter. Clearly, they did not take Felix Felicis before trying to palm us off with these trees. Coming second, earning three points is LEGO Friends for this gift wrapping station. And showing that sometimes crime does pay, LEGO City steal an explosive four points with this great Daisy Kaboom minifigure. But do you agree with today's points? Was it my terrible treatment of Anakin's pod racer that turned him evil and unleashed upon the galaxy the bin bag wearing mouth breather Darth Vader? Or can I expect the comments to blow up with explosive remarks for giving Daisy Kaboom gift of the day? As always, feel free to vent your frustrations or say nice things in the comments and you may get featured in tomorrow's video. 
There were lots of comments yesterday about Padma Patel, with most people agreeing that she is an absolutely beautiful minifigure. As Anders pointed out, the neon coral colour used for Padma's sari was absolutely stunning. Other people, including Russian Bot, are alleging irregularities in the scoring. I can confirm Dominion does not count the votes for Harry Potter. I have a panel of dead Pennsylvanians taking care of that. Flippy Orca 21 agreed with the scores and feels that anything featured in The Phantom Menace deserves to be last. I'm sure today's scoring didn't disappoint. Aaron Skinner is despondent and thinks Star Wars is finished and cannot make a comeback. You ought to check out a couple of Manchester United games, Aaron. Then you'll see what a comeback looks like. Blue's Lego Factory thought my Homer Simpson impression was, well, interesting. No! Oh! But I'm pleased to report that Noah approved of my vocal talents. Woohoo! Tracy Anglesey demands fair treatment for elves. I guess I'll have to join the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare to help free the elfish kind that Lego Friends is enslaving. Kimberly, on behalf of Ed, age 6, watch your language, Jeremy, reached out to say his dad enjoyed the reference from the movie Snatch, one of my favourites. I did have to tweak the thin ice line slightly, but I'm glad somebody noticed it. Finally, Aidan Lynch wants to know why I say Harry Potter. Well, Vernon Dursley yells, Potter! So I just figured that was his name. So after awarding 10 points out of the goodness of my heart, let's see how each calendar is doing in the race to win Calendar of the Year 2020. The LEGO Friends gift wrapping station was nice, but they are going to have to work harder. They're in last place with 34 points. Aided by today's win, LEGO City remains in third with a 4 point advantage and 38 points. LEGO Star Wars did not win the pod race or gain ground on their wizarding nemeses. They remain in second with 43 points. LEGO Harry Potter's Patronus is fully corporeal and signalling first place with 45 points and a 2 point lead. With LEGO friends trying to catch LEGO City and Star Wars and Harry Potter jostling for first place, the excitement is building. So have a wicked and wild Wednesday, stay safe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow.